Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for our featured bout, and it is brought to you by Hennessy Sports in association with the Brafie House Hotel, County Mayo, Ireland, GoldenPalace.com, The Sun Newspapers, and Hooters of Nottingham. This bout is scheduled for 12 rounds, and it will be for the vacant WBC Super Middleweight Championship of the World. It is sanctioned by the World Boxing Council. President is Jose Suleiman. Supervising tonight is Hussein Wishi, along with the British Boxing Board of Control. Stewart in charge, Dave Roden. The chairman is Charles Giles. The three judges assigned, scoring on a 10-point must system will be Predrag Alexic of Montenegro, Ermino Cuevas of Mexico, and Tommy Kazmarek of the United States. When the bell rings, our referee in charge of the action will be Guido Cavalleri of Italy. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Live from the Trent FM Arena, Nottingham, it's time for our main event of the evening. Introducing to you first, to my left in the blue corner, he's wearing black with yellow and weighed in at 11 stone and 13 pounds, 10 ounces. Coming to us from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. He brings with him a perfect record of 21 wins, no losses, with 14 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the current NABF, NABA, NABO, and WBO Super Middleweight Champion, Jean Pascal. And ladies and gentlemen, his opponent in the red corner, he's wearing black with gold and weighed in at 11 stone, 12 pounds, 9 ounces. Hailing from right here, Nottingham. He is undefeated with 23 wins, no losses, and 19 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the former unbeaten English, British, and Commonwealth Super Middleweight Champion and the official WBC's number one ranked contender, Paul the Cobra There seems to be literally of dozens of people up there in the ring now in some cases a little bit reluctantly making their way out and in a moment or two we'll have final instructions from the referee Mr Cavallari who took charge of David Hay against Jean-Marc Mormek last year a fight which of course Hay won remember what I told you in the last room okay shake it in good night And now the crowd raise their voices once again. Pascal, I wonder what thoughts are going through his head. He's been in training camp in Phoenix, Arizona, Carl Froch on the west coast of Ireland. Who's got it right? Pascal says he has the speed, and that is the key. Frotch says he has the power the and his round. speed is underestimated. 12 rounds, world title now on the line. Good start from Frotch. Straight away making Pascal feel the weight of his punches. And instantly they were on their feet all around this auditorium. Roaring Frotch on. Contrasting start to, to both boxers. Froch looked very pensive at the beginning, and Pascal 
Great right hand from Pascal. That's the danger shot from Pascal. Froch has the tendency to drop that left hand lead, and Pascal has a terrific right hand. He has real speed in that punch, and a lot of the damage that he's inflicted over his professional career has come from that right hand side. Throws hurtful hooks as well. Good start from Froch, but that's another good shot from Pascal. Good body shot, and doubling up well to the head, and the right over the top. Already, this is showing up to be a fascinating fight. Both Contrast of styles, Duke. Sorry, John. Both boxers very nervous. Both boxers very nervous. What you're seeing now is tension and power controlled into, into one thing. Fascinating opening round. Both fighters have landed big punches. theory in the Froch camp was that Pascal would get wilder as the fight went on, as he got under more pressure. The theory in the Pascal camp was that their man would simply be too fast and outbox Froch and land punches like that right hand. Well, there it is again, it's just, it's a, I don't understand Froch because the guy's got every punch in the book, he's fit, he's strong, but he just allows himself to get kicked with that shot. But he's never been down as an amateur or a professional has, has Froch. Both of them landing heavy shots once more. The Froch looking to reassert himself. He knows he's got to take the play away from this kid. Froch, five years, the older man. Both of them in professional terms, pretty much on a par. Does Froch have the harder punches? Well, make up your own mind as you watch this. Pascal won't believe so, and the Canadian fans watching, I'm sure, won't believe so. Good shots from both in the closing seconds. Big left hand from Pascal as Froch tried to unload to the body. Rich drama in the second round. This one's really taken off. Difficult one to score. Frotch maybe edged the first. How did he score the second, Duke? Yeah, I've got it one round each. Exactly one round each. First round, Frotch. Second round, Pascal. See, Frotch, Frotch isn't going to take him out with one shot. Frotch normally has it his own way when he's fighting domestic opposition. And it's turning into a real tear up here in the third round. Frotch normally takes out guys with these shots, but he's fighting a world-class performer. Not going to take him out in one shot. Robert, got... Robert McCracken, Frotch's coach, was saying, don't just stand there, block these shots, parry them. But he's going to have to work for this one. He's got to get that jab working and put the right hand behind it, then bring the left hook into play. Good left hand from Pascal again. Frotch threw it just before that to throw in a really good, solid, authoritative left-hand lead. His corner will want him to deliver more of those. Both boxers throwing absolute bombs in there, but it's classy stuff. Good shot from Pascal. He's had a considerable amount of success with that right over the top. Quality uppercut from Frotch. Great right hand. That gets them up at ringside. Well, this is a terrific fight so far. Can they maintain this sort of speed and power and intensity? for anything like the 12 rounds for which it's scheduled. This is where all that conditioning and training comes into play. Big right hand again from Pascal, just shrugged off by Frotch. This really is edge of the seat stuff, because you just feel if any one of these guys land, it's going to be all over. Well, both of them landed simultaneously with tremendous left hands. Who's the harder puncher here? Who's actually inflicting the greater damage? Good left hand from Frotch. Frotch is getting through, he's getting through. Lovely combos, but he's missing a lot, leaving himself wide open. Frotch is leaving his chin out to dry when he's landing these shots. He's swinging them in, he's putting everything behind him. Has to have a breather. Takes a lot out of you when you're putting shots like that together. Well, you can see Frotch blowing. Pascal was on the receiving end for most of that, but didn't expend too much energy in that exchange. Can he now produce an hour catching last 30 seconds to the third round? There's that big right hand again. 
and there's another one only just mentions them just for a moment Prost just looks a little bit groggy there and Prost wants to hold on by a few seconds as Pascal's physical strength throwing everything behind that punch and trying to get maximum power behind it just falling short with the right hand but there's a big one that went over the top big finish from Pascal maybe back comes Grosso in the closing seconds of the round shrugged his shoulders and said here have some more similarly relatively inactive as he waited for his big opportunity oh terrific right hand from Frotz but didn't he take it well Pascal I mean, that, that was flush may have just stunned him though that's a good left hand from Pascal oh, and another terrific shot from Frotz and back he comes back he comes Frotz just got the upper hand with that attack but Pascal comes straight back oh right big right hand from, from Pascal and the left and now Frotz just wants to hold on for a moment oh this is so exciting let me tell you Frotz took a right hand gave a right hand in return and I tell you I don't know how one of these guys haven't gone down both of them showing a granite chin the old rocky cliche not so much what you can give out what you can take as well and that is being shown emphatically here in nottingham tonight this wbc world super middleweight title is starting to shape up to be a classic another big right hand from pascal and frotz looks a little bit uneasy there's the right hand. Cuts. there's the right hand again from pascal just this little onslaught is just a bit tidier and cleaner than frotz's You've got to roll low when he looks back, well, standing up too straight, yeah, okay? Um, oh, it's all right saying, yeah, make sure you block him. I don't want you swinging up with a kick because he's quick, he hit you back. A couple more rounds, it'll start to fade. It's tiring, man, it's tiring. Do you understand, Carl? Have you got a brain to be professional? Yeah. Well, do it then. Don't go over the swing on this kick because you come on stuff. If you're boxing, you just away. win the rounds, keep picking him, oh, right? and then wear him down. It's turning out to be a macho tear up here in Nottingham. Huge punches landed Second by round, both men. Round five. And nothing to choose between them right now. Both of them, I suspect, in this fifth round, feeling the pace. Absolutely. Almost, almost for the first time, the action just starts to slow a little. Absolutely, John, you're so right, it's the pace. Beautiful left hook by Pascal. There, good hand speed from both men. They land simultaneously with colossal shots. Has Fox taken more there than Pascal in that exchange? Maybe. Both of them landed almost simultaneously. Well, I tell you what, Fox can take a shot. Never that his chin was ever in question, but I tell you, he's taken some cracking right hands and they've bounced off that granite jaw chin. But this really is the acid test for Crutch. He's got to show that he's world class. He's got to really find a different plan to beat this kid. Has he been the flat track bully? Is he truly world class? Well, we're finally out here. And Punch is after the bell. Punch is after the bell from Pascal. You cannot do that. You cannot do that. And, and they Pascal, were being, Pascal being jeered by the crowd. Those were punches which were flagrantly thrown late. Very deliberate punches thrown after the bell by Pascal, hoping to catch Froch on the off. Pick that out. Much quieter around as you would expect. They put so much into this fight. Very little from Pascal so far in this round, but the last minute, as any fighter would tell you, can sometimes be key. It's the old pro trick. Give it when the seconds are ticking away, and that's a terrific right hand from Pascal. But Frotch again, granite chinned, just blinks and takes it and tries to return with interest. Absolutely. But what, what Pascal's doing, he's finding the right hand and running in after it. That's what's catching Frotch out. I still think Frotch is winning this round, though, because he's using that jab to good effect. Pascal may be taking the round off and having a breather. Well, Frotch now tries to make him pay. Again, the Nottingham crowd up on his feet, roaring the hero on. Well, what a fight this is turning out to be. One straying low from Pascal. Chopping right from Frotz was a hurtful punch. And the British fighter has dominated this round for the most part. Yeah, he 
it certainly has. It's been a good round from Froch. Foot off the gas from Jean Pascal. Froch clearly taking that round. He puts his head down, doesn't even look to see where it's going, but it lands straight over Froch's jab. Just out of sorts with that one, but for the most part, for me, in that round, it was a clear Froch round. Three weights world champion, fine boxer in his time. That's how Duke's got it. Yeah, I've just got Froch just that one round up. That last round for me was a good round for him. And he started this round exactly the same. Lovely right hands from Froch. Looking for the uppercut. Looking for the right uppercut. Oh, this is good stuff. Pascal just starting to not have the speed that he had in the earlier rounds. He's just starting to be just that little bit more deliberate, less instinctive, blinking a bit and feeling the cumulative effect of the weight of Frotch's punches. Maybe, but still dangerous, still able to capitalise himself. Yeah, Pascal's starting to look a little bit tired now. Probably from the early rounds, obviously, it's catch, caught up with him. It's Frotch who's just a little bit fresher right now. Pascal gave it a tremendous start. Landed some superb punches, and I'm sure he can hardly believe that Frotch took them and is still there, and now is dominating this round as he did the last. Wild from Pascal, and Frotch capitalising. It's another good round by Frotch. Pascal looking more tired, more ragged in this round. Not been half as effective as he was previously. He took a solid uppercut there and a left hook to Pascal. And he looks tired, doesn't he? He's starting to look disorganised in there. And there's more of an air of desperation about his work. Crox lands with terrific body shots and says, yeah, I'm the daddy. We've got Frox now starting to establish a lead in this fight. I don't think that Pascal has clearly taken a round. I don't think he can argue a round for Pascal. Certainly since the fifth, but that's a good shot. And another. And another. Frotch takes the ball. This is a good attack from Pascal. He needed this. And Frotch is cut around the left eye. He's cut around the left eye. So it's going to be important for the corner. Pascal has gained extra confidence from this. Almost down in the closing seconds. Now let's see what the damage is to that left eye of Carl Frotz. They're going to have to work away to that. It's not on the eyebrow. Looks as though it might be the eyelid. Well, Pascal may have won that round, Duke. I just, just gave it to Pascal. Frotz just took his finger off the pulse and just let him creep back in towards the end of that round. But I've still got Frotch winning. Frotch has got to get busy again. Taking, taking silly shots now. Got to keep his chin down and his hands up. The championship rounds, which we're just about to we're entering into now, these are the ones that really count. This is where Frotch really has to hold it together. It looked as though he was slipping away from Jean Pascal, but suddenly the fight wide open again. Frotch breathing really heavily in there. As is Pascal, lovely shot by Frotch, stopped Pascal in his tracks, needed it to win this round. And he's hurt him, he's hurt him, and Pascal looking a little bit wild and a bit unsteady, Frotch senses it, big right hand from Pascal though. Just for a minute there, I thought Pascal's legs had gone, Frotch landed a cracking right hand. What a round, what a round that was. That pause. The two of them are helping Frotch do up his new house. I'm sure full thoughts about that a long, long way away at this very moment. Oh, good uppercut from Pascal, and Frotch just takes it once again. Right hand landed pretty flush. The chance of Nottingham, Nottingham got as the two men again land big shots. Back on instinct once more. Watch for me just pulling this round out. Very, very important.
important round this one and Frotch through boxing ability and just working away behind that jab has probably done enough I'm afraid in the cacophony here at ringside not a prayer of telling you what it was oh big right hand from Pascal that was a really good shot from the Canadian and it landed flush and Frotch just took it I don't know where he summoned up a punch like that from this late in the fight. That right eye is giving Pascal trouble. He's wincing in there, John. He's wincing in there, closing the eye, squeezing it tightly shut. He's up on his toes. Bit of kidology from Pascal. Oh, good shot from Frotch. And another one. And Pascal bravely comes back with hooks of his own. Frotch allowing himself to get dragged into that toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. This it's is a grueling, savage fight at times. It's untidy, it's sloppy, but you know, we're so late into the fight, these guys want to win so bad. It evokes memories of that first encounter all those years ago at the NEC in Birmingham between Chris Eubank and Nigel Benn. It's had that sort of ferocity, and that is some big thing to say, I tell you. Momentarily, Frotch choosing to go southpaw, and Pascal staggering forward drunkenly once more. Pascal had that good 15 second or 20 second flurry, and both of them are so tired. Last seconds of the 11th, and Frotch getting the better of that exchange again. The Nottingham crowd roar on the hero and sense that a man might now be just three minutes away from the title what a fight it's one of those where at times it's no exaggeration to say it has been a privilege to watch it displays of naked bravery from both men well this is where home advantage really pays dividends you're in the final round you're in front of your own people you can smell taste feel victory and these two are going at it again what a fight it is in the final round, John, they're still winging away. Somebody still wants to knock out. The Saudi of Frotch in his corner to box, box. Just work on the jab and do that. Work behind your boxing skills. Don't get into that macho brawl. There's a little bit of a skirmish on the other side of the Atlantic later on tonight. It's going to have to go some to match this. You know, you really couldn't blame Frotch for getting on his bike and boxing his way in this last round. He must know he's a couple of rounds up, but still he goes for the knockout. Still he forces Pascal to fight, to stand and trade. The chants and the songs begin. Is this to be the man who is to become the dominant figure in this division, just as Joe Calzaghe has been? Telling Frotch off for pulling his man down. I'm not sure that's justified. I think there might have been as much tiredness from Pascal, who's really lurching forward and leaning into his shots now. Yeah, both boxers now's faces show the, the scars of battle. But it's Frotch who's putting in a grandstand finish. Pascal, Frotch. Pascal has displayed tremendous bravery and great credit here has fought superbly at times and if he is to have lost he's young enough to come again but that's how we see it remember but you'll have your own idea watching at home and it all depends on the judges one minute to go less Pascal much more tired than Frotch they're both desperately tired both sucking it up but for me, Frotch just winning this last round, just winning himself on. 7,000 people will, land, will rise in acclamation of this in the closing seconds as the two end the fight as they began, winging in colossal shots, somehow managing to force themselves forward and throw yet more. This has not been the prettiest fight, but it's in its way, this has been a classic. What a fight! Punches after 
the bell. Both men believe they could have won it. Team Pascal celebrates, the Frost team celebrates, and all around the Trent FM arena, every single person is on their feet, applauding something which from the world of boxing was very, very special indeed. What a superb fight. Breathtaking fight. Well, the, the crowd are shouting easy, but it was anything but easy. Frotch has had to work really, extremely hard for victory. We don't I, know yet, well, Duke. No, we, we don't, don't know. We don't. I believe he's won. That's just my opinion. But I just think that, you know, he done so well from about round eight on. He pulled it out. He's shown a champion's heart. He's being congratulated by his promoter, Mick Hennessy, as Carl Frotch. And now being hugged by his brother and the other brother. Great family scene. They think they've done enough. And others making their way up. That's his mum who's got onto the ring apron now. There'll be a few celebrations, and that's the lady of Carl Frotch's life. Pascal waving to the crowd, drawing the jeers. He thinks he's won it. He's certainly got no disgrace in defeat if he has been vanquished here. And Carl Frotch, what a performance. He has proved emphatically for me that he is, in every sense, the genuine article. Barry McGuigan has it by four rounds for Carl Frotch. There are a few rounds where I wouldn't like to separate them. There's so many people up there. That's Mum. She's happy. She thinks that her proud son is now world champion. Carl Frotch must have won that last round. Final score from Duke McKenzie, we'll give you that in a moment. Barry's given it by four rounds to Carl Frotch, and Duke has got it by five. Five rounds for Carl Frotch, for Duke McKenzie. Are we to have a new British world champion? And in just a moment, I think the scorecards now have been collated, and I think we can go into the ring, and now we can find out who is the new WBC champion of the world. Frotch thinks it's him. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing, we go to the scorecards. Judge Tommy Kazmarek scores it 118 to 110. Judge Arenio Cuevas scores it 117 to 111. And Judge Predrag Alexic scores it 116 to 112. All in favor of your winner by unanimous decision, and the new WBC super middleweight champion of the world from Nottingham. He has got it. Carl Frock, the new WBC super middleweight champion of the world, and the judges gave it. One by eight rounds, one by six, and one by four. And that fight is why we all love boxing.